welcome to the episode that I like to call How to Make the Perfect Circle Using the Starch Applique Technique. I'm Allison Richter from Campbell's Soup Diary. I use a lot of circles in my quilt designs. I think they're the perfect little accent that add interest to a quilt. But I know that for beginners, sometimes making applique circles is not the easiest shape to achieve. You may find yourself frustrated because there's more corners in your circle than what should be in a circle. But there's a few ways to get around that and I wanted to share with you just how to do it. Let's get started. Part of making the, the perfect applique circle is to remember that you want to make a perfect template. It's important to remember that the more accurate your template, the more accurate your finished shape is going to be. I've prepared a few circle templates here that we're going to get started with. What I've done is I've simply used my compass to trace the circle and it gives me a more accurate shape. Then what I'll do is I'll use my paper roll cutter to cut the shape out. Here I've marked the roll cutter with a little tape so that way I know which one's my paper roll cutter and which one is my regular. Once you've traced your shape and cut it out, then you're ready to get started. So here I'm going to start out with a little bit larger shape. There's two ways that I uh, work with making these shapes. Here I've already sprayed the starch into my ashtray. Again, it's perfect for setting up your paintbrush whenever you're ready to move on. So I've left probably a quarter inch seam allowance on the circle. This is about standard for this size shape. Simply brush the starch onto the seam allowance. Try not to soak your template. And then what I will do is I will go in and take a little bite. All I'm doing is securing the fabric so that way it's not laying flat. A lot of times I will do this at the quarter spots. So directly across. point and then again at this point. Now I'm to the point where I can ease the rest of the fabric around my shape. What I'll do is I'll go here in the middle section and I always want to have the iron in front of the shape and I'm gently twisting the iron a little bit to get the fabric around that curve. Again, I do the same thing here. And it's a little more about the movement of the iron. Once you have it secured, then you're moving the iron instead of moving the shape. So when, once I've finished a shape like that, I will go and iron it with my regular iron and let it set. Here's a second circle that I can show you. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with just four little bites, then you can add a couple more. But again, like I said, I would probably start out with the, the quarter points. So here you can go in between those two points, this point and that point. Do another little bite until you've gone all the way around your circle. Then go in front of the, the fabric and pull the fabric toward yourself. It's a little bit of pulling toward yourself and twisting at the same time. 
And it's important to remember to be gracious with yourself. Your first circle, go ahead and calculate that it will have corners. Your next one will be better, <laughs> the one after that even better. And just remember that that iron is very hot. So this is using the mini iron. A lot of times whenever I'm working with a larger circle, I will use my regular iron for this. So you can see here that I've cut with just a little bit bigger seam allowance. This is easier for me, I think, whenever I'm using the large iron. Again, paint the starch on the seam allowance. And I prefer to use a stiff brush for that because it is easier to apply. So I will do the same thing where I take a little bite and it's very important to have your steam function off. It's a little harder to get those bites in there. And then go in front of the shape and pull it towards yourself. Sometimes I'll lift it up with my fingers and see how I'm turning the iron as I go. You can hear the starch bubble a little bit. Now I would recommend here with the large iron, perhaps only doing the larger shape. You can try it on the smaller shapes if you want. Whenever I'm doing my extra large shapes like uh, the piece wings for my dragonfly pattern, I'll use that, the large iron. go back over it again now that my shape has been secured and iron it from the front. Now that I've finished the smaller circles it's dried enough to where I can take the freezer paper template out. Once I've taken that out I'll generally come back over it with my large iron and here I will turn the steam function on. A lot of times I'll just place the, the iron on the template. And there you have the perfect circle.